grab it here, it's going to fall on the floor. Uh, we've got two scopes, the 30 and the 70 degree scopes. There's no focus or anything needed with these type of rigid lenses. Um, should be crystal clear uh, when you hook it up to the camera. If it's not, you know, Doc can check the scope or the scrub, look through it, or, you know, check your camera. Uh, but again, it's a 30 and a 70. We've got to have one of each in each set, um, and they're clearly marked. Hopefully you guys don't get sets up that have two 30s or two 70s. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But, um, you know, when you're done with the case, if you're able to put it in these sterilization uh, covers, this does help protect the lenses during transport. Uh, another key thing, everything kind of lines up with this system. It all inter clicks and, and lines up. Uh, if something's out of alignment, it's just gonna mess up uh, the whole chain. So with the 30 degree lens, that's what we're gonna use uh, with, with the bladder tumor or the turps. It should slide in there easy. If you have a lot of resistance on this component, um, set it aside downstairs if you really have to push this through because what happens is, is it just ends up breaking the seals on the tip of the scope and it may not show up on that cycle but over a few sterilization cycles if this has been damaged um, you know it's uh, it's not going to have a good image everything clicks in you probably all know this but to release the lens there's a little black button there you simply pull the black button that'll release the lens um, you can't pull it without uh, pushing that black button it won't release um, this is where we hook the loops up um, you know when you're done with the case to release the loop or the electrode whether it's a button or a loop you're just going to push that black button and uh, discard that so not sending it down with an electrode attached uh, as far as the other components everything should be when you open the tray uh, all the valves should be open um, we have an inner and an outer sheath so that's continuous flow just check these tips from time to time they do downstairs but it's good to check them upstairs these are ceramic tips after so many uses and sterilization cycles they will start to crack uh, and again everything lines up if you if it doesn't slide in there smoothly and you have to force it just kind of set it aside and let Deronda or David or one of them they'll take a look at it or give me a shout uh, but uh, you know everything else uh, you guys have used this set for years. We have several of these sets, so I know you're all familiar with it. Uh, but again, the lenses are the, the, the high dollar amount. Uh, I mean, it's all expensive, but these are really high dollar to fix. Um, so just uh, try to use the sterilization covers, and um, that's pretty much it. In, any questions or anything that I need to be aware of when it comes up from SPD that anybody's noticed that out of the ordinary? Has it all been pretty good? Okay. That's all I got. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. You want to do the cryo next? Sure. Get the machine out of your way. So. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for your quick attention. My name is Justin Rep, and I am one of your local HRK reps. We do the crowd nerve block, and we also do the cardiac ablation. I'm also your local donut delivery guy. So mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to run through how to set up the cryo machine really quick. It doesn't take very long. It's a really simple machine. You plug it in, plug in the probe, and turn on the switch and the gas, and you're pretty much done. So I'll run through it step by step, and then I'll hang around afterwards. And if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask. All right, so the first thing we want to do is plug in the machine. Once you got the machine plugged in, you want to go down here to the bottom where your two gas tanks are and find one that has this black knob attached to it. That is the one that is attached to your gas. So you want to go ahead and open the tank fully. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the crowd machine. Once you turn on the machine, uh, there's a gauge in the back that will tell you how much gas is left in the tank. You want to be above roughly 650 PSI. And as the tank warms up with this little orange jacket on the bottom, that, that PSI is gonna start to increase. You might notice up on the front here, there's this little gas, this, uh, this tank gauge. We don't typically like to pay too much attention to that gauge. We want you to pay more attention to the one on the back and make sure that one's above 650 PSI. 
So once you got the gas on and the machine is plugged in, this is the sterile instrument, this is the probe. It's got the little, the freezy end at, at the end here. And then we're gonna plug this in, it's very simple. So this blue connection, it's a quick and easy one. You just push it in and you'll hear it click. Now this orange one is a little bit more difficult. You have to slide this collar back. And if anybody wants to come up here afterwards, I can show them in a little bit more detail. But you'll slide that collar back and do the same thing as you would with the blue. And you push it in until you get that audible click. Now these last two, they're color uh, coordinated, so they're pretty easy. And they just plug straight in. So you plug in the black to the black. I can get it. And the red to the red. Once you got everything plugged in, you're ready to go. You're ready to freeze. So whenever the surgeon is ready and says go, go ahead and freeze, you're gonna press this green button and you're gonna start freezing. Now you notice on the front here, you'll have a timer and a temperature. These will automatically be set up, ready to go once you turn on the machine. So once this probe, and it's gonna take a little while because the, the tank is not warm, but once this probe hits roughly negative 40 degrees Celsius, the timer's gonna start. So we'll wait for it to, to reach that uh, correct temperature. If it'll get there. Hang on just a second, I'm sorry. I think the tank was left open. Oh, okay. No we problem. Have, we have a photo. <laughs> okay. So now the tank is open. I'm sorry. So we're going to retry that freeze. Okay. So green means you're good to freeze. <coughs> okay. So now we're freezing. Sorry about that. And you notice the temperature is starting to drop. So now we are at the freezing point and that timer is going to start counting down. It takes two minutes to do a full freeze. And once that two minutes is over, the machine will automatically cycle to defrost. So it's automatically going to defrost that probe for you. And once you reach zero degrees Celsius, you're going to get those three beeps. And that's going to tell you that you're go you can go ahead and remove the, the probe from the wherever you're freezing from. And then that light is automatically going to turn green again, letting you know you're ready for another freeze. And it's as simple as that. Now take apart and uh, uh, put away the machine. You're going to do the exact opposite of what you did before. So once that light is green, you can go ahead and unplug all the, probe, all the connections. You'll turn off the gas. and you'll see two red buttons on the back of the machine. Whenever you're done, you wanna press either button. If the machine is still on, you can use the small red button and that's gonna get rid of the gas that's still left in the machine. So once all the gas is out of the machine, you go ahead and turn it off, unplug it and you're done. That's it. And again, if you have any questions or would like more detail, I'm gonna hang around after this and uh, Feel free to come up and I can show you in greater detail. Can you show us how to change the tanks out, like change the, oh, if yeah. the tank was empty? Absolutely. So if the tank is empty, it's pretty simple. You'll come down here and you want to make sure this tank is off. So we closed it as we turned it off. And this, this black little part here, you're going to twist it and there might, there might be some pressure left over. You're going to twist it all the way off. <laughs> And you're just going to simply place it on your new tank and you're good to go. One last step is this orange blanket. So this is the heating blanket. It's going to allow the gas to expand. It's going to give you some more pressure. So what you want to do on the back here is when you're switching tanks, just take off the, the orange cord that was on before and plug in the other one that's on the other tank. And that's it. You're good to go.
Does anybody have any immediate questions or anything else that I missed? I think so. All right. Thanks, Thanks. everybody.